everybody. Good morning and welcome to Azure Flash News on November 16th, 2018. It is, it is November 16th and I just heard an interesting st uh, statistic. Do you know what on this date and I think 1907, what state was uh, admitted to the union? November 16th and 19 what? I think it was 1907. 1907. Uh, Nevada. I think it was Oklahoma. How about that? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you because I don't know. <laughs> You asked me a <laughs> trivia question that you didn't know the answer to? <laughs> what is that? I did. I did. I think it's Oklahoma. Rick. It was close. I think it's Oklahoma. Oh, um, Rick. Yeah, but, you know, use your Bing Fu skills. You too can be Find an expert out. in trivia. That was a trivia question out to everybody else. That's right. Did, did they get anything if they get it right? Uh, I will send swag to somebody if I get a, a mention on, on Twitter. Absolutely. There we go. Rock swag on. to the answer. That's right. Okay. So, yeah, happy Friday. We got yeah, a little, I it's mean, the weather is not cloudy. abysmal, but we got yep. a little bit of snow on the hill. It's a little cloudy. Yeah, actually, I mean, I guess they've been making snow because oh, that's, yeah. yeah. that's not, that didn't fall. No, no, no. They're, generally speaking, they try to open at least part of the hills around Thanksgiving. So they got, um, they so got they, their work cut out for them. Absolutely. A lot of man-made um, snow, which if you're a snow snob like I am, that is gelatinous goo is what that is. So it's usually not that fun to be on that kind of snow, but it beats... But any time on the hill exactly, is a good time. Exactly. It beats being on the grass. Yes. <laughs> Which is a very painful way so, to ski. For those of you who don't know, uh, this month is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And a lot of the content that I curated, um, when I was looking at content for today's show, has to do with security. So put your tinfoil hat on. Security is good. <laughs> right? Get your burner phone. Uh, let's see, get your disposable laptop. Yeah. What else? Your RFID protector for your wallet. <laughs> Trade in your car for a 1973... With no software in it, right? Ford. Yeah, exactly. 73 Ford... Uh, no, what would we use? I don't know. How about a Mustang? An old Mustang? Okay, oh I like gosh, that. Those were not um, so great. Turn off Google Home. Uh, uh, actually, you need to... Well, I mean, even if you turn off your phone, everybody knows know. that even when you turn off your <laughs> you phone, you're, 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 you're talking about something, and then all of a sudden you see an ad for it somewhere. Oh, dude, don't get me started on that. It I am happens. a conspiracy theorist. It happens. Totally. All right, anyway, so, so we've got some today. good subjects. Uh, we've got some good topics of conversation today. We've got some operational practices that we actually use ourselves, and this is part of a series. Um, some monitoring capabilities for your open source databases, which is always exciting, right? We we like to monitor. Absolutely. Doing a lot of that at my customer right now. Yeah, Lots. definitely. Definitely. I, I could actually do a 10 minute demo See? like next week. There you go. We could talk about it. There you go. Come to think uh, of it. We've got some lessons learned for building roadmaps for um, secure hybrid, right? Not just building out a hybrid uh, type of solution or approach to the cloud, but building a secure, secure one. Secure hybrid. Uh, getting started uh, with, uh, so this is kind of cool cognitive services in containers that you can pull into your stuff. Okay, so we'll talk about that. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna give away the candy at the candy store. And then last but not least, um, there's been some updates with the uh, uh, virtual assistants, right? So when we talk about um, AI and ML and chats and all that good stuff, we've had an acquisition, but we've also made some, some, uh, some, some stuff. Yep, some stuff. We've made we're, some progress. We're going to say we're going to progress being the keyword I was looking yeah, for. That's right. And if there's time, I have written a little recognized speech uh, using the speech Ooh. SDK. It's just a simple, it takes a WAV file because I've been experimenting. Um, oh. I've actually got a pet project going on right now. One of my neighbors had done some really cool things with his father be right before he passed away. He had actually done these interviews with him. And I thought, what an awesome way to preserve kind of, yeah. you've got voice, you've got sentiment, you've got all the mm. things interestingly enough when he started telling me about it wow that sounds like it, we could do some really cool stuff with cognitive services yeah. so what i had him do was i had him copy all the files onto a jump drive i uploaded them into blob storage and so i'm starting to experiment with um, basically converting to text oh. um, doing emotional sentiment doing some different things with the content but then also um, loading it into azure search hmm. so the cool thing about it is i want to be able to um, do a search on a topic like maybe uh, yeah. um Wow. Uh, whatever. Maybe yeah. his favorite restaurant, yeah, and sure. and these subjects come up. But yeah. then when they come going up, out, going out to eat. Yeah, going out to eat. Yeah. When they come up, being able to actually click like on something that's highlighted, and it takes you to the audio. So I've been playing with wow. that, and and uh, the the what I've learned to recognize is number one, the um, the speech SDK is drop dead simple. If okay. I can do it, anybody can do it. But number two, it's so powerful. I was just, I was oh. blown away by the power that we've got in our cognitive services. So, and shame on me for not actually doing this sooner. Shame on you, Rick. Right? Thank you. Shame I on know, you. I know, naughty, tiss, naughty. Tiss, tiss, tiss. Yep. So this also reminds me of um, StoryCorps. Yes. You know StoryCorps? Yes. Yeah, they, people interview yes. each other? Anyway, yeah, same exactly. Kind of thing. Same concept. I was just, cool. 
but I've also taken uh, my takeaway from that though is. You know, we've got such a, and I'm not trying to get all deep and philosophical here, but That's okay. we've got it's a limited time, right, on this planet, and to preserve these types of memories, especially like yeah. if I can have these conversations yeah. like with my parents and and pass them on to my kids and stuff. What a cool legacy to kind of build for, oh. you know, f like familial understanding. Like, why was Dad, you know, yeah. well, it, he, what you was know. it like when Dad was exactly, Whatever. totally. Yeah. So anyway, cool. I digress, but cool, cool, cool. It, but yeah, so. Cool stuff, fun stuff. And that's like, um, like you're going to do that at the end? Like, what, I like can, a, absolutely, if we like got time. Code, like, yeah, yeah, demo? absolutely. Awesome. I'll just walk through Can't the code wait. quick, show you what's going on. Okay. And yeah, so let's get so started back to with... security. Exactly. So uh, there's a four-part blog post that's been really, really powerful. And it's really, um, it's great on how Microsoft Azure actually provides a uh, secure foundation, right? We've mm -hmm. talked about this in the past. Um, but it's just, it's awesome that we lift the Komodo, uh, proverbial Komodo, and basically Komono, Komono, yeah, Komodo sorry. dragon, right? Yeah. Komodo. Right. We lift the dra we lift the, the dragon, <laughs> and apparently it's a boy. <laughs> yeah, don't stop, just move on. So we 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 uh, we peel back the onion. Let's say that. How's that? That's I'm better. going. More apropos. Yeah. yeah. We peel back the onion, and we basically expose. We're very transparent in how we do the security stuff, and yeah. you have to be right, because otherwise customers, it's. It's like, well, nervous. if if I can't, if I don't know exactly what you're doing, how can I trust you with my bits, yep. right? Yep. In this day and age, with you know all the breaches and everything else that's happening, it's just, it's really, really, it's critical for for Microsoft as an organization, I believe, yep. to be transparent. So yep. I love that we're we're exposing all this stuff, we're sharing all this. So um, this particular uh, post is really interesting. It talks about four operational practices that are really foundational to securing the platform. So we, so these are four things that we do. To make sure that our platform is secure for you. Correct. Frankly, you could do them too. Yeah, absolutely. And that's but, why we call it out. Yeah, exactly. The, the, this goes. The first one goes back a long ways. Long way. Secure long deployment ways. practices is. Uh, I mean, yeah. it is quintessential to really everything that is right. Because if you don't start with a secure deployment practice, like all bets are off. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. It doesn't say here when, but we used to. We talked about SDLC. Mm -hmm. The secure by, development life cycle. Yeah. Yep. For. 2003. Yeah, pretty much since I've been. Oh yeah, definitely that long. <laughs> that's when that's when the initiative started. So the yeah. Secure Compute um, initiative started back in 2003. That was when Bill Gates basically said, "Everybody, stop writing code. I want you guys to all read this book, and we are all going to change how we do software." Yeah. So, so um, obviously, a lot of lessons learned. We've been attacked. We've been attacked. We've been attacked. We've been, you know, Windows has had its share of of kicks, but yeah. uh, they've come a long way since then, absolutely, to provide not only trusted and, you know, uh, in encrypted, trusted execution mm -hmm. um, enclaves, but also other technologies to harden the operating system. Um, but we've carried that forward into Azure. So we talk about secure deployment practices, yep. right? Least privilege access, just-in-time access, yep. um, really uh, deploying under credentials that have nothing but the ability to deploy that particular piece yep. or that resource, right? Yep. Yep. Um, really, really important. Obviously, restrict, so talking, you know, extending that restricted and just-in-time administrator access. Yep. Last week, I think it was, we talked about our customer lockbox. So that's a great example of not necessarily how we do things at an Azure platform level, but yep. how we would engage customer if we yep. need to engage customer information or data. Yeah, so in other words, if we need access to your stuff, you go into the portal and grant us exactly. access for a certain yep. period of time. That gives our, our support person access, they yep. have access, and then it expires. Exactly. So. Um, you know, number three, fast and expert responses to threats, right? This is, this is a process that gets followed or people get fired. It's that simple, right? Yeah. We don't, we, you know, part of the process is basically by having a process that is very rigorous and is, is very structured, you avoid things like social engineering scams or phishing scams yeah. or these types of attacks yeah. where you can go off script. No, you don't go off script yeah. ever. It's yeah. that simple. Yeah. Um, totally. So we, this is something we've talked about in, in the past as well, our five-step incident response process that, that we do internally Mm -hmm. But then we also, if there's been, if it's been determined that a customer has had any issues, or if, if for example, we detect on the customer's behalf that yep. maybe they have an unsecured VM, we will incorporate them into, I believe it's a nine-step process. Yep, yep. And we can help with customers if they detect something like that. Exactly. So, so reach out to us. Yep. And yep. last but not least, cybersecurity experts. Okay. We've got 3,500. <laughs> I mean, the number is just... It's just it's daunting. Yeah, that number that number caught my caught I my know, attention. Right? So thirty five hundred. So, so how many people? How many companies have thirty five hundred people in their IT organization? I know, right? Exactly. And we just how many, in our organization. That's how many alone we have in cybersecurity. Just in cybersecurity. Thirty five hundred. Yeah, that's it's, awesome. It's crazy. I love it. <laughs> and so we've got this cyber defense operations center, which is basically kind of like our command and control center yep. um, for cybersecurity. Um, I know that we've had some really interesting conversations. We've helped out in certain cases with. Uh, government entities with other yep. customers, you know, yep. obviously when yep. there's a breach, 
Um, we do have. Uh, I mean, we. I mean, uh, Microsoft was in the news not too long ago yeah. about about a phishing attack against some political. Yep, yep. Folks, I think it was at the state level. It was. At the, it wasn't at the national level. It was at a lower level. It was but, at a lower level. That's when we but, introduced the um, the uh, the new uh, service that basically protected like government officials and entities. Yeah, it was yeah. like an extra layer on top yeah, of. Yeah. Um, I think it was AD or on top of their email or something like that. But now yeah. we've actually, I think, released that to um, the broad, the greater audience. So yeah. it's not just elected officials or it's not yeah. just uh, public officials. It's kind of everybody. So which yeah. is really cool. Awesome. So, so, yeah, this is a great, I mean, like I said, it's a great way to understand, again, in transparency, this is a cool way to see, this is how Microsoft does it, this is how they do it at massive scale, yeah. right? So if you scope it back, scale it back, this is how you as an organization can follow best practices, especially, um, yep. you know, some of the low yeah, these, stuff. Th these are things you guys can do. So, go, so read this up. If you want to know more, let us know. Yep, definitely. Yes, right. absolutely. So monitoring your Azure open source databases. Yep. So we talk about PostgreSQL um, and MySQL using Azure Monitor. Yep. Um, for those of you who are listening or those of you at home who don't know, Azure Monitor is a very comprehensive, very... Um, uh, uh, well, it's a platform-wide... It's broad. It's, yeah, broad. It's, it's so broad, right? It, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, that, that's what amazes me. So I've been doing a lot of work with my customer on yep. monitoring right now. And one of the things that's really amazing is that Azure Monitor is a one-stop shop for all of these various kinds of resources. Yes. And the thing is, is that in some companies, you have a team that manages the monitoring tool because there's a software stack and, and it's it, somebody needs to know how to operate it. Somebody needs to know how to upgrade oh, yeah. it. So they yes. have a team that does that. Literally. Well, in the cloud, you don't need that. No, you need, it a, turns you need out, a team of one. <laughs> well, you need the developer can just go in with maybe some help from uh, somebody else who's like, well, here are yeah. the things I think you ought to monitor. Like, this is you're not on your own, but you can go into the monitor tool, right. set your own thresholds. Yep. It you don't like you can just do it right there. Absolutely. It's first party. Absolutely, first party. That's great, and that's a great example of DevSecOps, right? The developer yeah. going to the security person or the operational yeah. person and saying, let's work together. Let's to... work exactly. That's a perfect example yeah. of where you bring DevSecOps into play to do this type of thing, right? So, so we're bringing this to. Yeah, we're, we, we're continuing to expand to exactly. all of the platform. It's very exciting. So you can see the cool thing about Azure Monitor is you can see we can ingest information at the application level, at the mm -hmm. OS level, yep. um, at the Azure resource level, right? Subscription, tenant, etc. You can have custom sources. We can ingest that information into Azure Monitor, where basically we've got logging information, yep. but we also collect metrics, yep. right? And that's that's important, I think, for more performance. Yep, that's um, right. And it helps you kind of understand scale needs. It, it helps you right size your your workload, that kind of stuff. Um, but what's cool about this is we've extended it into uh, great Azure picture. Database for PostgreSQL and MySQL, yep. right? Yep. So now it's just not about Azure SQL databases, no. which we we love, right? We're big proponents of. Of course. Um, but if you're using one of those other options, you can actually include this as well. So think about it. In other words, a lot of times in these open source tools, you needed a tool that worked with open source. Right. And then you might have needed one that worked really well with SQL. Yeah, right, right. Well, when you're on Azure, you just use Azure. One-stop shop, baby. One-stop shop for both open source <laughs> and Microsoft. It's all there in Azure Monitor. And the cool thing, too, is so there's more options for monitoring. Um, we also introduce, uh, we, we, we partner, we, we allow integration with partners. So, for example, Datadog is oh, a perfect sure. example, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's essential for monitoring platforms. Um, there's a lot of customers that, that I've talked to use it um, at an enterprise level. And it definitely enables developers and ops teams to work collectively together by collecting the information, mm -hmm. by, by curating it, by doing all the things that you would expect. Um, but it's a supported for those those databases as well, which is super exciting. Yep. So they actually support um, as a service uh, PostgreSQL uh, and MySQL as well. So yep. not just IaaS, um, Datadog definitely oh. works with that as well. So the cool thing too is you've got options, right? Yep. We're Thanks. big fans of open source. We're big fans of options. Yep, that's right. <laughs> that's one of the things you get with cloud. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming. Well, but, it can be, But right? the options can be a lot. Well, but it's nice we're there to help. You've got a toolbox of tools right. instead of a hammer. That's right. Because otherwise, you know. Everything looks like a nail. That's Everything is a that's nail. That's right. That's what DBA say. Man, that's if, right. if all we got is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. That's right. We can solve it with SQL. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With stored procedures. Yes. I yeah. like, I'm a fan that's, of Sprocks. Yeah, that's right. That's the way it works <laughs> in DBA land. I'm, so, I've been there. Now, this one's cool. So we talked about, so in the earlier post, we talked about a four-part blog series and in, in how Azure, well, how we secure the Azure foundational capabilities and services, right? Yep. Well, what's interesting about this particular post, uh, so we're segueing into the next post for those of you listening. Um, this goes into lessons learned for building your roadmap to a secure hybrid clouds future, right? 
Mm-hmm. So um, at, at first, when Microsoft started our own cloud journey, we were hybrid, very hybrid, right? We yep. had some of it on premises, we had some of it in the cloud. Um, obviously, we've moved and we're continuing to move, and we will have moved basically all of our digital properties, all of our digital resources and assets into the cloud. Yep. Um, and so what was the first thing we needed to do? Rationalize the application. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't remember the numbers, but I think we went from like 8,000 apps or 10,000 apps or something. There was a huge amount of oh, apps down to, down, to like, down to like 10 or 15%. So it yeah. was really 15% of the, the total number. So right. it, was a, it was a crazy number of apps. And they were like, look, we need to figure out what we need, yep. what we don't need, what right. are we going to move to the cloud? Because the cheapest move to the cloud is the one you don't do. Exactly. Right. And when you think about that, so if you've got, you know, if you've got a, a SharePoint site dedicated to, or, or an access database or a SQL database or something yep, that's yep. dedicated, say, like signups for potlucks for yep, the holiday yep. event or that that's kind right. of stuff, you don't necessarily need to move that. You may replace it, you may do something different, but yep. it's not necessarily a top tier candidate for. No. Nope. And you might have a lot of reporting tools, you might have a lot of COTS apps that kind of do the same thing. Absolutely. So, and Absolutely. you might even have some that you're like, you know what, it's time to kill that app. Like yeah, we're just over, gonna, yes. We're just not going to bring it to the cloud. So. Right, right. That old Fox yeah. Pro database that you still have run, laying around someplace. D-base. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Clipper. I'm just saying. <laughs> wow, you're going all nostalgic on me. Heck That's yeah, awesome. Man. Love it. You went but, to Fox Pro. Uh, I went to, I I know, went to, I went to Clipper. Fair enough. So step two, though, is build that solid foundation, right? If, yep. Think about if, if you were to build a house, you're not going to do it. You're not just going to slap some boards on the ground and call it call yep. it a day. Yep. You are going to at least up in the north, right, where we have to have uh, we have to go 48 inches below the frost line. Yep. You're going to build a foundation. You're going to build a basement. Yep. You're going to pour the concrete. You're going to let it cure. You're going to um, basically put the lag bolts um, sticking out of the concrete so that when you put that foundation on, it's nice and secure and everything's tight and it's it's, right. it's 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 something to build on, right? Yep. And the same thing holds true to your cloud, you know, your secure roadmap for going to the cloud, especially in a hybrid scenario. Make sure you have dedicated connections, private connections, yep. whether it's over VPN, site to site or point to site uh, or express, express route, route, right? Uh, yep. Make sure you're turning on private and public peering so that you're not traversing the public internet with sensitive data. Make sure you're doing encrypted at rest. You know, all the things... <laughs> And, and I know it sounds like table stakes, but sometimes I think these are things that can slip through the cracks when people yep. aren't, they don't have a checklist. They're not, yep. you know, paying real good te- yep. attention. Yep. Um, establish an identity layer. You've heard us say this on the show in the past. Identity is the new firewall, right? Identity is the new yeah, firewall. And, and I think that uh, uh, I was listening to um, Kurt Del Bene and uh, Julia White talk mm. at Ignite, and they were talking about how do we get rid of the intranet? Uh-huh. We don't want an intranet anymore. Exactly. Like, so in other words, the point is to say, well, the intranet is the stuff that we need to keep private. So we put it on our internal network Dude, and they're 80s. saying, and they're saying, no, 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 no. It just goes on the public internet. Yep. There's no need and for the intranet it. anymore. We just secure it at the edge. Exactly. That's, we, we should be doing that internally anyway. Yep. And so once it's secure internally, then you say, what, why, 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 why internally? Let's why? just put it out on the internet. No why, big deal. why am I curating these assets and these resources and spending money here when I could be doing it elsewhere so, or handed off? Yeah, and then provide that firewall. Yep. Absolutely. So, and I, and I think you'll you can you can talk to this, or we can both talk to this. Just internally, we need our VPN less and less and less every day. Oh, yeah. It's just like now I can just go to pretty much yep. anything and get, hit all of the resources we need to do yep. our job. There's a few left. Yeah, two form There's authentication. A, boom, boom, boom. I'm in. I'm into whatever it is, yep. whatever intranet it would be. And, and HR I'll be honest, and all that. Stuff. Sometimes it kind of does freak me out a little bit. Like I'll go to log into like our HR website, and I, you're like, oh, that's a publicly accessible endpoint. It's all, yeah, it's but it's, it's not all publicly accessible, <laughs> right? It's it's on the public internet, but it's not right, publicly exactly. accessible, exactly. which is two different things. Yeah, so anyway. it, even every once in a while, it kind of freaks me out. But and last but not least, definitely adopt an assume breach strategy. So sure. for those of you that don't know, assume breach is is a defensive posture where you just assume somebody got in. So instead of doing threat, I mean, you want to do threat modeling too. Sure, don't get course. me wrong. Yep. But you want to make sure that you you take an assumed breach strategy and that you just assume somebody got in. You don't know how, you don't care how, but how do you basically, between layers of your infrastructure, between layers of your environment, how do you essentially put them into a box and not let them get to that next layer? Yeah, I mean, it's like if somebody if, if you assume somebody already has credentials and is on your network, right? that's the best way to assume that yes. has already happened because you're already in the mindset of not making the fundamental assumption that exactly. nobody's inside. Exactly. That's a big That's mental a ba- block to put yourself in. <laughs> and I think it's that. a poor assumption. It is right? a really poor assumption. So Absolutely. It happens. Just yeah. we like we see these things happen weekly. Oh, totally. Just, totally. So, anyway. so some really good examples, some really good lessons learned, and some really good guidance on 
you know, developing a roadmap for a hybrid cloud type of, of solution and, and, uh, and structure. I did skip over one, um, and that's, oh, yeah. uh, that's use built-in services. Well, and this, I think this goes to the 3,500 cybersecurity experts yes, a little bit, because exactly. it's like, we've really thought carefully about these built-in services that we already have. Uh, you're welcome to build your own, uh, use your own stuff. That's okay. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. Yep. But if you're on our, if you're on our first party services, right. Uh, you're just reducing your attack surface, if you will. Yes. You're kind of, you know, using our experience across all of our customers yep. to kind of have to help you. So. Oh, exactly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I I can't tell you how many I've t times I've said, stop rolling your own. Yeah. Stop rolling your own. What, pick your. Stop rolling your own splat. Right. Stop rolling your own security. Stop rolling your own identity management. Yeah. Stop rolling your own. Yeah. You know, whatever, because it's that's going to get you into trouble. The more complex your environment is, the less secure it is. Yeah, complexity, through, yeah, complexity is the enemy of <laughs> security. Yeah, Absolutely. It's, just, it's just the more complex it is, the less you understand about it, which means it's less secure by totally default. Agree. So, so simplify, 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 yep. um, and take advantage of those services. Yeah, so kind of kind of uh, pivoting a little bit here. We've got getting yeah, started is... with Azure Cognitive Services in containers. OK, so OK. <laughs> so tell me what you mean here. I'm not sure I know what you mean. So this doesn't mean so, calling a cognitive service from a container. Okay, that that's a no-brainer because okay, it's a public well, endpoint. Just, you just call out. You use the service. You that's incorporate. That's the standard it. use case. Exactly. You just, I mean, you can deploy to web apps or containers or whatever. Right. And you just call cognitive services. Exactly. What, what is this about? So this is basically taking these cognitive services as a container and pulling them into what you're doing, right? Whoa. Right. I know. Whoa. Right. <laughs> there is a, you know, and people freak out. There's like, oh my gosh, there's so much intellectual property in there. What if somebody, what if, right? Half we, this stuff is open sourced already anyway, right? What we're making, what in, in some cases, that's a good point. In some cases, what we're doing is we're actually just making it easy. Exactly. Well, that's the whole point, right? Is I want to use the face API. So I'm going to grab the face container. <laughs> and instead what? of calling out, say, to the public internet, maybe I'm doing edge node IoT stuff. Maybe I'm doing... You know, I'm doing some compute at the edge, whatever it is. Maybe I'm a retail organization and I want to pull it down or I want to do it in my yeah. own um, VNet or, so, you know, whatever it is. Maybe I want to do it in my own AKS cluster. So maybe there's a performance thing. Um, there's a lot of use cases where just calling out to a public endpoint is prohibitive to accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish, right? And so in this case, you can take this container, you can use this container, consume the container. And, and of course, the big thing here is Satya has been saying this for a long time. You guys don't know who Satya is? Microsoft CIO. He's our boss's I mean, boss's CEO, boss's CEO. boss's boss's boss. Yeah, <laughs> he's way up there, getting stuff done, mm -hmm. leading the company. But he has always been. He's been saying intelligent cloud, intelligent yep. edge. Exactly. Intelligent cloud, intelligent, intelligent edge. edge. He yes. talks about that a lot. The key word is intelligent. <laughs> I'm kind of going, oh, what, Rick? <laughs> I know that was kind of on purpose. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so this is intelligent edge. Yes. So in other words, if you're saying I need to have a device, like I'm thinking like Azure I, Sphere, it's running well, Azure, Sphere. Azure Sphere, but I'm saying like if you have a device out in the field that's watching something go by, uh, let's just say um, uh, 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 in a warehouse, mm -hmm. watching packages go by and you need to do OCR and you yep. need a little device to do yep. that. And it needs to be essentially cloud disconnected yeah. because the uh, connectivity is horrible. The connectivity is horrible or it's too latent or whatever. Yep. You need to basically do the face detection, the OCR, whatever, yep. on the device, send the telemetry to Azure. Yep. So the upload to the cloud is connected. Yes. But the actual the actual cognitive workload is, is, done is at the edge. On the device. Exactly. Super, Whoa. super cool. I know, right? Super exciting. And the cool thing about Man. it, though, too, is... You know, a lot of people, well, what, what if there's updates? What if there's, well, that's, you know, boom, the container that's gets published pretty, I'm, right I'm, to the container registry. You just pull it down, you ba you do your update, and you're well, done. Well, that's also IoT hub and right? two-way communication, device registration. Yep. Like, if you got questions about that kind of stuff, I know the guy to talk to. His name is John. <laughs> that's right. I'm we, serious. No, fan. If he works in this out. office, that's right. we can help you with that. Yep, that's a great call out. So, um, absolutely. There's wow. a, a recognized text container. Man. There's the face container. The cool thing about this post is there's examples galore. So if you're in the container space or you're interested in, in containerizing and using these capabilities, they're Dude, all here logo ready detection? to rock, right? Like, I mean, all of our cognitive services. I know it's awesome. Dude. I know. That's wow. why I said it. at first, I'm like, oh my gosh, we've we given away the farm. Do we charge for this? Uh, that's a great question. I, I, actually, I don't know what I, I have to admit. Don't... I have to, I have to. I don't... Complete ignorance. I don't know well, what our I don't know. That's is. what I was looking at. I was like, I don't see pricing in here. 
Wow. We're good. That'll be a good follow-up then, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I, I always, I say this to people, I always reserve the right to be smarter tomorrow than I am today. <laughs> and today, I'm looking here and I'm going like, wow, because pe- that's always the next question people of ask. Of course. How they much? say, that sounds really cool. How much does it cost? But wait, there's more. Before I respond, let me tell you, act now and we'll throw in a free <laughs> yeah. Ginsu widget. Night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Call in the next 30 seconds and we'll double your order. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> No, this is again super that is exciting. Cool, man. If you're in this space, if you've got, if you ha- got, if you if you got, if you got game, if you done uh, got, if you done got game, uh, <laughs> if you have a situation where you need to pull this down, this is absolutely a solution to remove that barrier of entry of connectivity or whatever the challenge is. So, great solution. Wow. Take a look at the the blog post. It's definitely, like I said, there's examples galore on how to use these containers. Yeah, that uh, wow, cool, yeah. awesome. On to the next. Last but not least, getting nope. started in minutes, build your own enterprise grade virtual assistant. So uh, for those of you who uh, have been kind of watching our mergers and acquisitions happen, uh, we recently acquired a company. I don't know if it's. How do you say that? That, thank you. So, 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 so we acquired this a company where they were uh, known for their conversational AI and bot yep. capabilities, development yep. capabilities. So in addition to that, we've we've got the the bot framework SDK tools 4.1 release. So yeah. uh, what we've done is we we keep simplifying and simplifying and simplifying um, the ability to incorporate these chat bots into your environment, into your yep. product, into your ecosystem. Uh, we have a, a chat bot emulator, a framework emulator that helps you kind of as a developer, right? Yeah, which is totally cool. I know. It's because awesome. you don't have to mess with all that stuff. You're just like developing your code for your yep. bot and you just fire up the emulator and you can say hi. And it like, exactly. And your Visual Studio lights up and yep. there it is. You're debugging. It's So we've awesome. got an emulator. We've got a, a web chat control, right? So basically, I don't know Whoa, if I didn't know that. are probably using SignalR. Wow. Right. So in other words, you just basically take your ESP.NET and drop it in there. Yep. Yep. Dude, yep. I know, right? That's so we've cool. got a chat control, um, and and so we've got C Sharp and JavaScript SDKs that are available yep. for consumption, right? We and realize that not everybody's going to be using ASP.NET nope. uh, or ASP.NET Core. You yep. might be using uh, Pick Your Poison, but we do have a JavaScript SDK to support it. Yeah, and uh, the backends can also be both either Azure Functions or like an MVC. Yep. Dot net if you want. So Absolutely. like, there's a lot of options there for you. If like, if you want to just do uh, microservices, now I don't know, st- uh, not microservices functions are more like yeah, serverless microservices. Serverless. I guess. Yeah, right. I Absolutely. Know. Well, serverless? that's yeah, technically yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, Absolutely. Lots of options. So right so what is this? What what are we? So basically, the topography shows kind of you know you've got the. The Q and A oh, maker, is, you've got Lewis, you've got a bunch of different capabilities, yeah. and and ultimately this is an all up exactly. Like, so this is is yeah. essentially creating your own internal brand, right? So this shows yeah. you all up all the integration yeah. points, um, and you know we've got Cortana obviously, but you could create your own Cortana or Alexa or yeah, totally. Siri, you know, call her whatever you want or him whatever you want, doesn't you know, matter. You know, I I think it's important to understand. I think this is great kind of a in, inside Microsoft we use the term all up. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I like that term, but that's what we say. So. <laughs> This is an all-up view of our, you know, AI, Cortana, bot Everything. technology. It's all, it's all here yep. on this page. And so it's like, because there's lots of pieces that kind of get into different areas. Yep. And you kind of have to pull them together. And so, um, you know, we like you said, we've made some acquisitions and some other stuff to make it uh, yep. possible. Absolutely. But this is a total view of what's going on here. And there's a ton of stuff waiting for you to use. Uh, you know, you can really have a Hello World bot set up in just a, just an hour, oh, a totally. few minutes. It just doesn't take that long. No, nope, exactly. Um, so yeah, then, super exciting. One of the coolest things I remember is using is Lewis, yes. which helps you like determine intent. So if somebody says, "I'm looking for the product information for whatever," Lewis can help you actually use AI to understand what they mean so that your code can react. It's very cool stuff. Absolutely. Okay, you've got yeah. something to show us. So real quick, I'm just going to walk through this, or just go through this demo real fast. Um, Probably not the best display resolution, so let me just uh, scope this out here. Well, that's so, right. You're so, kind of low res here. I know. Being super lazy, what did I do? I went through and I pulled out um, the source code and the, the samples that are on yeah. GitHub, by the way. Yeah. All yeah. open source stuff. Yep. Um, so it uses the uh, cognitive services speech, okay. which then pulls in audio. And then, of course, I'm using uh, .NET 4.6.1, so it okay. pulls in system.media. Yep. So it goes through and it does basically WAV files. So I'm going to have yep. to... Um, 
Convert so this, my files. So, so just to remind people, we talked about this about a half an hour ago. It's crazy to think. Yep. This is using the WAV files from the interviews, and yep. you're pulling them in Correct. to do speech detection, yep. sentiment, that kind of stuff. Exactly. Okay. So what I did was I have got a bunch of files that are in various formats, so I will okay. have to convert them from WAV files. So okay. uh, just to test uh, the, the integration and then make sure it works, I've got this What's the Weather Like WAV file that comes with the okay. SDK if you okay. need to. Okay. Um, and, and if you listen to the WAV file, so I'm going to go through here quick. See if we can hear it. Will it play through the system? That's a great if... question. We're going to find out here in We're a second. We're about to find yeah. out. So That's all right. This BC, we're going to go to, let's see, we're right here. And I've got my, what's my weather like? Where is it? Wave, uh, wave. Where are you? Where are you? There it is. There it is. Okay. Groove. All right. Oh, we can't hear it. Sorry, we can't play it over the, I'm not getting the audio. So that, no worries. Uh, You'll maybe have to it's trust me. Oh. What's? Try, try one more time. I wouldn't know. Uh, That's okay. No Move volume. Anyway, but trust me. It, it says something. It it's does say something. So if we go through and run this code, it's just outputting to a command line. So a lot of this, I, again, being lazy, yeah, a lot yeah. of this is sample code from the GitHub repo yep. that you can pull down. But if I run this, you'll see that it's it's recognizing the text as it's coming through, and it's building that out. So so it just it loads the file, yep. runs the file through the cog. Yep. Uh, API. Yep, exactly. And, and what does it say? So it's continuously, so you can see text oh, equals wow. what's, text equals what's the, text equals what's the weather. And then you can see it recognizes it as a question. So what's the wow. weather like? It picked up the actual intent. Dude, cool. Right? So, what, so what this is doing is it's like you could have a live stream. Yeah. That, for instance. Yep. You what, can, instead of saying, um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. if I go back up here and I'm saying, uh, from audio, from wave file input, you can read from stream, you can read yeah, from the microphone, wow. you can read it as it's happening. So in other words, you can just be listening to somebody talk yes. and detecting Real every time. word. Boop, 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 not boop, boop. only that, but there's translation capabilities. It will translate Ooh. on the fly. So in, so what we just saw, if I added the translation, I just have to say from language Como to estás, language. Mi amigo? See, si, si, un poquito. I can, uh, you'll, you'll be on. <laughs> um, you can actually, it will actually, if you de if you define the, the destination language, yep. that kind of stuff, it'll output in wow. the actual translated language. Cool. So, cool stuff. Easy How peasy. long did that take you? How long this did that was take five you? minutes. Literally, the source code's available, made it super simple. Um, just had to write that little tweak to get grab that WAV file. Um, yep. Now I'm going to convert the rest of Now that I know it works, I'm going to convert the rest of the files to WAV files out of the various formats. Done. Done, exactly. So Very cool. Sorry, we're up against the hard stop here. And I, I, we apologize for going a little bit over, but I thought it'd be fun to share some of the stuff with you today. People really like the demos and the code. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. That's good. So um, uh, if there are any questions, concerns, cheap shots, remarks, etc., you can certainly reach me as usual at rickwey at microsoft.com. Or you can hit us on our Twitter handle at Azure Flash News. You can catch me at M Garner or M Gar at M Garner on Twitter or M Garner at Microsoft.com. Please right feel free on. to email me, no yeah. problem. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. We appreciate it. Today thanks the show to the was MTC. produced. Yeah, thanks to the MTC for hosting us. Yep. And thanks to Emily McMiller who's producing the show today. Thanks to her. Appreciate Absolutely, it. always. And thank you for joining us. Thank yeah. you for tuning in. We know you're busy as usual. And we always appreciate uh, you taking the opportunity or taking the time out of your day to yeah, uh, listen to us. It's an honor. Yeah, it really is. It's a privilege and it's an honor. So, as usual, we look forward to uh, talking to you same time, same place next week. Until that time comes, keep your fingers on the keyboard, keep your heads in the cloud. Thanks, everybody.